Welcome to Mikon's hardware. Ever since Windows 11 public version was available for testing, my subscribers and not only subscribers were constantly nagging at me to test it with the Xeon E5 CPUs. Now Windows 11 is finally released and I still don't see a reason why people are getting so excited about this system. Windows 11 is designed for the upcoming Intel Core CPUs which have hybrid architecture with power cores and efficient cores. It means that one CPU has two different CPU cores. For the existing systems, Windows 11 has almost nothing extra to offer. A part of this, Windows 11 comes with frustrating requirements, such as at least 8 gigs of RAM, secure boot support, and TPM 2.0 module. It's important to understand that these are artificial requirements from Microsoft and Windows 11 is working as good without this TPM module or without secure boot. Additionally to these issues, we are also given performance degradation with AMD Ryzen CPUs as well as half-done ugly UI in the system itself. Nevertheless, due to high demand, I decided to test Windows 11 with the Xeon E5 2640v3 and compare its performance against Windows 10. First, how do you actually install Windows 11 on X99 platform, which is according to Microsoft does not fit the minimum required specification? Right now in the internet you can find multiple different guides of how to do that because these are artificial requirements, it is not something that Windows 11 actually needs to function. For example, I have followed a detailed step-by-step -step guide from a website called WinBuzzer and the link you will find in the video description. I don't see any reasons why I shall go through each detailed step because everything is already described there, but in short, during the installation you just press Shift F10, you will open a console window, in the console window you start registry editor or reg ed, and there you add some special registry keys to bypass TPM and secure boot requirements. If your computer has less than 8 gigs of memory, you will also have to bypass this check. And that's it. After that, you can simply install Windows 11 on an officially not supported hardware. In my case, I have also got an issue with USB 3.0 during installation. When I tried to install Windows 11 using a USB 3.0 port, the installer for some reason was not able to detect any hard drive and any SSD drives. The solution for this problem is very simple. You just shut down your computer, replug your USB flash drive into a USB 2.0 port, and it works. I don't know why this issue is present, but maybe it's because Schwanway X99S motherboard, which I have decided to use for this benchmarking, has C226 chipset, which was never designed to be used on LJ2011 version 3 platform. Maybe Windows 11 does not have a proper support for USB 3.0 ports on LJ2011 platform with the Intel C226 chipset, but it doesn't really matter, just use USB 2.0 and that's it. Additionally, the same as Windows 10, after installation you have to first install all available updates and second, go to that hidden menu and install all of the optional updates. After that, Windows is working perfectly fine, no extra drivers are needed. If you do not install the optional updates, there will be a bunch of unrecognized devices in the device manager, your system may boot very slow and may malfunction. You can also check that virtualization basis security is disabled in your system settings. If this feature is enabled, you may get lower performance than expected. How to do this you can also find online, but in my case, when installing on X99 motherboard without secure boot and without TPM 2.0 module, this feature was disabled by default. Now let's quickly go through the test bench which I used for this video. Schwanway X99S motherboard with Huanangju X99 8M F BIOS, Xeon E5 2640v3, 32 gigs of DDR4, 4 sticks, 8 GB each, running at DDR4 1866CL11. For the graphics card, I use my standard AMD RX 6800 XT, EVGA Supernova 750p2 power supply and two SSD drives, 250GB and 2TB in size, one for the system and another one for games. By the way, I will be giving away this Schwanway X99S motherboard with the E5 2640v3 and 16GB of RAM to my subscribers. If you're interested to participate in this giveaway, there is a link in the video description which describes how you can do that. Finally, let's take a look at some synthetic benchmarks. ADA64 memory and cache benchmark. Here, Windows 10 and Windows 11 are performing almost identical. There is nothing extra I can say. 
CPU Z performance is also almost identical, but here Windows 10 is a few points faster than Windows 11. Cinebench R23 testing single core and multi core performance, and yet again the performance between Windows 10 and Windows 11 is identical. And the final synthetic test will be Blender with BMW and Classroom scenes. Here, Windows 10 is again a few seconds faster than Windows 11. It's important to mention that all of these tests were performed three times and here I represent an average value across three runs. As you can see, Windows 10 and Windows 11 performance with the Xeonify 2640v3 is identical. But how about games? For this video I have tested 9 different games, but only two of them yielded some sort of a difference which is worth mentioning. In Far Cry New Dawn and Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Windows 11 was consistently a few FPS faster. The difference is tiny, but it is consistent and Windows 11 was always a few FPS faster than Windows 10. In all other tested games, the performance is identical, and I have tested Far Cry 6, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Watch Dogs Legion, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege, Immortal Phoenix Rising, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and F1 2021. As expected, Windows 11 does not bring anything extra or anything exciting to the Xeon E5 users. The performance is almost identical between Windows 10 and Windows 11. In some rare cases, Windows 11 or Windows 10 was a tiny tiny bit faster, but the difference is so small that I would not even mention it. As I have said at the beginning of the video, the main purpose of Windows 11 is to support the upcoming Intel CPUs with hybrid design where Intel decided to implement two different CPU cores on the same CPU. For now though, for the existing users, Windows 11 is just a frustration. For example, Windows 11 comes with frustrating requirements of Secure Boot and TPM 2.0 module, you can also experience some performance problems if you are using AMD Ryzen CPUs. Additionally to this, Windows 11 is coming with ugly UI which feels half done and Microsoft for some stupid reason decided to remove customization options from the start menu. With all that being said, my advice for the existing Windows 10 users will be very simple. Do not upgrade to Windows 11 unless you really have to. As of right now, Windows 10 is a better, more stable, more polished version compared to Windows 11. At the same time, Windows 11 does not bring anything extra to the existing users. The main purpose of this system is to support upcoming Intel 12th Gen Core CPUs with a hybrid architecture. With this, I have to say, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting, I hope it was educational, bye bye!